Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 301 of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. Going to be a lot easier, I think, for me to remember what episode we're up to because I'm kind of just starting at one now. <laughs> as long as I say 300 at the start, I can just start counting from one uh, <laughs> upwards. So that's that's great. That's a new uh, benefit to the show. I uh, I've made a huge I've I've made a huge error mm. recently. Uh, have I talked on this show about how I'm trying to befriend the crows? <laughs> have I done that? I every day. I think I've talked about it on Instagram. Maybe every, yeah. I've decided there's crows in our area in Frankston because there's a lot of bodies for them to feed on, <laughs> uh, and I've decided that I'm going to befriend the crows. I'm going to be that that bird guy because. I think that that there's there's a few levels to to types of um, bird guys out there in public because there's bird, the the best type most well respected bird guy is bird guy that has birds in his house in a cage, that's the that's the 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 one percent of bird guys. Everyone's like, oh yeah, that's a like no one thinks twice. Like, oh, he's got a pet bird. I would say the bottom rung though, right? The the most like ugh, look down upon bird guy is pigeon bird guy. Uh, but not like has a roost at the top of his apartment building. That's kind of cool, but like guy who goes to the park to feed pigeons and gets covered in them. <laughs> like that, I'm sure he loves it, but everyone else is like, Ugh, that's, that's strange. Um, I think that the, the most respected type of bird guy, at least in Australia, is uh, is guy that uh, makes friends with magpies. That's... Mm. Like you see some dude who's who's got like a, a wild magpie that comes and says hello on his on his porch or, or his window and everyone goes, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. What a cool guy. I've never seen wild crow guy. That's that's the perfect type of unhinged and strange that I like. I want to make, make friends with all of my local crows in the area. Sounds like a Stephen King character. Yeah, the crow man. <laughs> You know, like a giant fucking six foot eight slender man dressed in all black walking a giant fucking pit bull <laughs> feeding, being followed by a murder of crows and, it, and, he, and he won't talk to you. That's, that's going to be me. So I've been, trying to, I've been trying to befriend the crows and I'm making some progress, but I fucked up big time. So uh, every day I just Google what do they eat, what do they like to eat and uh, unsalted peanuts. So I've just started every time I see a crow... I just whistle and I throw some peanuts on the ground. Yep. Magpies get it every time. Magpies will see me do it and they'll come and get it. But the crows are like really suspicious and they and I don't think anyone feeds them, so they're not they don't really know what I am doing. So I've been doing this for like a week and a half, just feeding, throwing peanuts down, and that just get ignored. A uh, few days ago, one crow flew down and picked up some peanuts, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I got one! Awesome." And from what I've read about crows, they're super smart. They remember faces. Not only do they remember faces, they can also somehow, right? Bird experts have no idea how they do it. Ravens do this as well. They can tell their friends what you look like and that you're a cool guy. <laughs> they have no idea. So crows will go, hey, that fucking, that massive tall guy with the incredibly scary dog, he's actually a really cool guy and he gives you peanuts. Yeah. So... I fed this one crow and I was stoked about it, right? I was really happy with it. I was like, yes, I fed my, fed my first crow. It'd been like a week of me throwing down peanuts and they just ignored me or they were too scared or they were worried about the dog probably as well. Feed one crow and then the next day I go and he's there again. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I fed him again. And then the next day he was there again and I fed him and then I went to the cafe and I did some, my, some journaling and then I came back and I walked down the same street and he was waiting for me on the pole. Nice. And so I, I threw down some food again. He wasn't interested because they got really small stomachs. I guess he was full. And then I started walking down the street and he jumped off the pole and he flew down above my head and landed again. And then I kept walking and he flew and landed above my head. And he did that three times all the way down the street. So cool. Followed me. Uh, and I was like, oh, maybe you want some food. He didn't see me throw it the first time. So I throw it again. No interest in the food. He just followed me all the way home. And then flew like right to the, the treetop outside my house <laughs> and then was like cawing and I did a little whistle and then I went inside my house. He just followed me home. He's like, who the fuck is this guy that keeps giving me peanuts? I want to know where this guy lives. And I was like, oh man, that's so fucking cool. I've made my first crow friend because he didn't even want to, he didn't even want my food. He just wanted to hang out and be like, well, what's this guy's deal? Where does he live? <laughs> so I made my first crow friend. 
then the next day I leave my house and on the 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 nearest like electricity pole super high up 15 crows <laughs> 15 fucking crows. And I've never seen them in a group that big, right? And in that moment, I, I go, oh, no. I think I've been confronted with the reality of being a crow man. Is because they're loud and they're big and they're all, they're all up there going, wah, wah, and they see me and they're all going, wah. And truth be told, I was like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> That is so good. Like 15 of them just going and like staring at me. I can only imagine that this one crow was like, guys, I fucking promise you there's this massive dude with a terrifying dog and he gives you peanuts. And they all be like, fuck off. <laughs> You're lying. That's not true. <laughs> they, were they, they would be so suspicious, right? And I see this and I go, oh my God. 15 fucking crow friends I can go up and, and I start walking up towards them and I start and I start moving towards them and uh, I get out my my peanuts and uh, they're across the road from me and I'm with the dog and in my experience when I've thrown stuff uh, on the floor on the ground and they're like uh, across the road they don't fly down because it's too much of a distance or they don't want to cross the road or they're just a little bit suspicious or they can't see it I don't know what it is so what I do is I get even closer and there's 15 of them and they start getting a little bit nervous, but I'm like, nah, it's all good because I know that my mate, the crow has told all of his buddies that they can trust me. And, uh, I, I reach into my bag and I pull out my, my Ziploc bag full of peanuts. And then I drop my notebook on the fucking floor and it makes the biggest noise and they all fly away. And I scared them all off every single one of them. And they started screaming and running away. None of them stayed except for my one crow mate. <laughs> and he looked at me with such disappointment. <laughs> and I have, ne I still, it, that was like five days ago. I haven't seen them since. So I can, I can only imagine that he fucking was like, dude, there's this guy that gives us food. And they're like, all right, we'll see. And then in their minds, I tried to fucking kill them. They're like, oh, great job, Steve. That guy tried to fucking kill us. He wasn't going to feed us. Did you see his fucking dog? That's a, that's a prey, an that's a prey animal. It's a predator. They're going to kill us. You idiot. And now that, that crow has no mates and I feel like I've done it to him. So uh, that's where I'm at with trying to be the strange crow man is, uh, I made, a, I made heaps of progress and I made my first crow friend. And then I got him alienated from the group for being a crazy fucking lunatic telling all of his friends that, that this guy feeds you peanuts when really he just tries to kill you when you get too close. I just found this website that, that have broken down what uh, crow sounds mean. Okay. Um, what does ah mean? Uh, it, it means it's safe or it means that my, my spot is taken. They were doing that noise, man. <laughs> they were just going, oh, it's a, this is our fucking mate who feeds us peanuts. Going, yeah, let's go. I'm here. This is my territory. This yeah. spot is taken. <laughs> yeah. This what it, or, or it's I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. You should have a read of this website and learn to speak to them. I should, because I've just been whistling. I'm trying to just make like one distinct noise. Because that, that is what the guy, the, the one crow was was doing, was like that that I'm safe noise mm. when he followed me home. So he was like, man, I feel comfortable with this legend giving me peanuts. And now <sighs> I blew it. I blew it. So any tips on befriending crows or corvids? Let me know. Corvids. Um, it was my girl's birthday uh, just yesterday. and uh, And I almost nailed it, man. I almost fucking crushed this birthday. I had it all planned out and I and I got really fucking close to nailing it. Have you you ever almost nailed a special occasion? Yeah. 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 It's very hard to do it do it well. Especially because my girl fucking hates surprises. <laughs> like hates them. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't like being surprised. If I tell Jazz that I have something planned for her, she it gives her so much fucking anxiety. It's unreal. It makes me feel like I'm the worst gift giver of all time. It makes me feel like I've done, I've given one, one birthday. I gave her like the worst gift of all time. And now she can't ever handle surprises. <laughs> the only thing that gives me relief from that is that uh, she's hated surprises from the very first birthday we've had together where I surprised her and she, she liked the gift. She fucking hated the, 
Oh, wait and see. What was the surprise again? You've told this story before. Yeah, I got her a, uh, I, 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 this is when I was working at a call center and uh, I spent months and months and months lay buying uh, and paying in installments off this beautiful red bass guitar because she wanted to learn bass. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like just still the, probably the best gift I've ever, like it was all downhill from there. Uh, but uh, I took her into the city to go and pick it up. Yeah. And I was like, we're going to the city for your birthday. I can't tell you what it is. And the whole way there we fought. <laughs> the whole, cause she was so anxious and so stressed about it. And I was so like, no, I'm going to surprise you. Cause it's like, you're going to find out. I would rather you find out by me showing it to you rather than just, oh, I'm, I'm telling it to you anyway, let's go the, the rest of the hour and a half into the city to go and get it, <laughs> you know? But yeah. that's what she would have preferred. Um, and I've learned that now, but it makes, it makes the birthday stressful because literally we'd organized, we were going to go to the hot springs, right? We, we, we had a voucher to go to the hot springs together. So she knew that was happening. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she also picked out a present that she wanted me to get her. Like that's how we do birthdays. She will give me a list of five suggestions and then I have to tell her that I'm getting her this one. And I can surprise her with like flowers or a nice card or a little trinket. But if she doesn't know exactly what the main thing is, it will ruin her whole week and the birthday will suck. She just can't deal with it. So she knew what she was getting. She was getting hot springs and I was going to get her a, a, she wanted a DNA test for the dog. <laughs> yeah. And everyone I've told to, told, uh, what are you getting Jazz for her birthday? I'm, I'm getting her a DNA test for the dog. Everyone goes, really? <laughs> like everyone looks at me like I'm the fucking worst boyfriend ever. When I go, I'm getting my girlfriend for her birth, her 29th birthday after 11 years together, I'm getting her a doggy DNA test. <laughs> they look at me like, are you saying she's a fucking bitch? <laughs> Like what's wrong with you? Nothing. It's something's wrong with her. That's what she wanted, and she's very happy with her gift. So fuck you. <laughs> but then the night before, like at, at like fucking nine p.m., so I'm almost unconscious. She goes, "So, what are you giving me in the morning?" And I was like, "Uh, well, well, you know, you're, you're getting like a. I'm getting you a DNA test." She's like, "Yeah, but what are you like giving me as soon as I wake up?" <laughs> Oh and I'm like, well, well, I, well nothing. Cause I've already got you a, I've already got you. She's like, but yeah, but are you like, uh, do you have, you need to give me like something small in the morning <laughs> or I'll have a bad day. Oh. And, and this is like 9 PM. I'm like, fuck. Mm. Right now, unbeknownst to me, I had already bought her something small that I could have given her in the morning. I bought her a little Jigglypuff thing from EB games. She loves that Pokemon. Mm. I bought her that three weeks ago, completely forgot about it. <laughs> I bought it for her. I was like, this will be great as like a, the little tiny surprise that doesn't give her anxiety because it's like a little extra thing, but she knows what the main gift is. And I had completely forgotten that I'd put, put it in a hiding spot. And she goes, what are you giving me in the morning so that I know that you love me? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't have anything. I don't, I, Cause I, she stressed me out. I couldn't think under pressure. My brain was off. I was like, what am I going to do? Um, so I ended up uh, waiting for her to, she went downstairs to do something and I frantically found it, found like a card that was probably like half a Christmas card somewhere in the house. And I wrote her something. I was like, I'll, I'll give her that in the morning. Yeah. Right. So I narrowly escaped death by nailing the morning. And then she got her actual gift and she was like, oh, exactly what you told me you were going to get me three weeks ago because I told you that you had to get me this thing or that thing. <laughs> And then you had to tell me which one you were getting. And then I could go, ah, oh, yes, I'm going to have a good birthday. I think she didn't have many good birthdays <laughs> growing up. I don't think, I don't think surprises were good to her in her house. Oh. Right. So, uh, we do all that, nail that, have a great birthday. We got Diablo four. We started playing it together. Awesome. All right. I'm saving her life. Every single time we play the game, she has no idea. Okay, perfect fucking boyfriend gameplay behavior. Mm -hmm. You just keep them alive, protect them, 
And then when they go, hey, man, why are you on such low health? You go, ah, oh, it's because I suck. <laughs> it's because you're so good and, and I don't know what's going on. You're a queen, right? And then we have our whole day. We do some other things. Uh, and then we uh, get to the hot springs, which was booked for 10 p.m., right? Now, I've now had a full day and I have a chronic sleeping illness. And I, and I start to shut down. And I go, it's okay because it's only like 8 p.m. So I'm going to go to sleep for two hours and you have to wake me up. And then we'll go to the, the hot springs. And because I want to go with you, and this is true, I'm like, I want to go, I don't want to miss it. So you have to wake me up. I'm going to set an alarm. And then I woke up and it was 3 a.m. <laughs> oh. and, and, uh, and apparently she tried to wake me up and I could not be roused. I just couldn't wake up. It was impossible. So we missed out on the hot springs. She got a DNA test. I'm sick. She was fine. She wasn't that disappointed. She knew exactly. As soon as I said, I'm going to have a nap for two hours. She was like, yeah, that's the end of our birthday. My birthday. <laughs> she just gone at 8 p.m. and asked to go in earlier. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, but then I would have fucking drowned in the hot spring. I would have fallen asleep in the fucking... I was like shutting down. Yeah. It hit 8 p.m. and I was like, man, this medicine is not that good, you know? Yeah. I actually went to the hot springs for Phoebe's birthday the other week and we fell asleep you in one of the one of the hot tubs. Oh, at least you fell asleep there. Yes. <laughs> Instead of one of you falling asleep beforehand, making it impossible to go. <laughs> We, I think we'd be able to move our bookings, so we'll go later. Because our anniversary is coming up next on the 26th. Oh. Yeah. What Inconvenient. Are you, what are you doing for that? It's annoying. We, we have the the most annoying birthdays because my birthday is right after Christmas and then her birthday is right before our anniversary. Mm. So when it's my birthday, she's like, well, fuck, I'm only going to get him one good gift. You know, so you either have to have like an average gift on your birthday or Christmas. And then I'm, I, I usually go, I'm going to get her the good thing on the birthday. But then well, the anniversary is really important too. So it's like, fuck. Mm. So, uh, yeah, she'll get a rescheduled appointment for the hot springs for, <laughs> <laughs> for anniversary. But uh, no, it was good. I almost nailed it. Nice. One of the better birthdays we've had. Have you, uh, have you ever f completely fucked a birthday before? Yeah, actually, mm. it's quite rude to think back on. Yeah. <laughs> on her 18th, I had no money and I uh, yep. thought Classic. it would be really funny to get her lots of little uh, like meme things. Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing the significance of an 18th. Yeah. And uh, she was not impressed. <laughs> I just, once it came up, you get it? I bought like. <laughs> How long have you been with her? This point? Ne uh, at that point, like less, at that point, less than a year. Yeah, or but like just wait, over so was that first birthday together? Uh, so no, second. So we'd been together for a one year. Our anniversary, our yeah. anniversary is a few days before her birthday. Okay, so yeah, it's like within a year. Yeah, uh, I got her like season one of Dance Moms on DVD. <laughs> Because I thought that was really for funny. For her 18th birthday. I thought it was funny. That's funny as the additional gift. You get a, a gift and then you go, ah, dance mums. Or you go dance mums and then she gets really upset that you go, actually, I've got you a really nice. Mm, and then she was going, and? I got her like, <laughs> I and I've spent every birthday since. I've spent the last five birthdays making up for it. I've spent, ever since the bass guitar incident, I've spent every fucking birthday in extreme anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> and going, oh, fuck. And kind of similar to you is I, I'd spend the month of May, her birthday's May 30th, yeah. planning with her what to get so I don't disappoint her. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do does anyone listen to this show, if you're a girl, do you like, do any of you girls like surprises? Or do you have a girlfriend that likes surprises? I feel like... That you guys don't like that. You like the idea of surprises, but when your partner goes, oh, you know, when you, what's, what are you giving me for my birthday? And they go, it's a surprise. That's the most terrifying thing that any man could say. Because I'm really good at birthday gifts. I'm, I've been very good at it. My girl's even better, but I've, I've, I've risen to the occasion. I'm quite good at it. But she, but I like surprising and she will not allow it. Because here's my thing. I have to, I must tell her exactly what her main gift is. I have to. Because if I don't, it it 
freaks her out so much in the lead up to the birthday that she'll have a shit one. <laughs> so I don't get to, but I want to surprise her. I feel like her knowing what's exactly what she's going to get is like a letdown for her because she goes, oh, what is it? Because we do the whole, like if she, I'm like, I said, look, if, if I have to tell you exactly what you're getting, that means I don't have to wrap it up. <laughs> and she goes, no, you have to wrap it up. I'm like, no, but the, but the, the wrapping paper mm. is assists in the revealing of the surprise. That's what the wrapping paper is for. If it's just a gift, I can just pull it out of a bag and give it to you. And I go, it's what you asked for. <laughs> I've never wrapped a present. <laughs> <laughs> what? You've never wrapped a present? No, I just put it behind my back and go, surprise. I was joking. I wrap them. You don't uh, wrap them? No. <laughs> you got to wrap your presents. Yeah. Never like, wrapped. What about Christmas? Really? Never. You don't I, do like, but that's the best part of Christmas is having the tree and then the presents underneath it. Uh, uh, you know what? There's always, cause there's always one nice special present. I yeah. get my mum to wrap it, but everything else I just hand to her. Yeah. Like, you, you just go. fucking, you were like, oh, you know, you keep it on the kitchen table a few <laughs> days before Christmas. I'm not like Who's that, that for? Oh, it's a surprise. I'm very thoughtful about my gifts, but yeah, giving not gifts that gives though. me a lot of, it freaks me out. So I am very communicative with, communicative with what I'm getting. You know, you know what it is? It's just, it's, yeah, I feel like boyfriend, girlfriends, when it's time to surprise one, one and the one or the other, when, when the boyfriend goes, when the girlfriend goes, what are you getting me? That fills boyfriend with so much anxiety. And they go, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to surprise you. And then that fills girlfriend with even more anxiety. And they go, oh, no, a surprise. Is he going to fuck it up? What's going to happen? And then boyfriend sees that anxiety and it sets him off even more. And now he's incapable of getting a good gift because he's frozen in fear. <laughs> what if I fuck it up? So, look. Doggy DNA test. Good birthday present? Probably not. For her, amazing, I'm sure. She'll love it. And it's and it's kind of like a it's kind of like two presents because because uh because here's the other thing with a dog DNA test, I couldn't like really the gift is the results of the test, right? Yeah. So I didn't know which one because here's the thing with the surprises is if she goes, I want like uh if she goes I want exactly this item, right? Like I would like this book by this author. I can buy that easy. If she goes, I would like makeup. I'm fucked, you know, because uh, I'll get, I'll, I might get her the wrong one or the anxiety of not knowing specifically what type of makeup I'm getting will set her off. So she goes, I want doggy DNA test. And what she got on her birthday was Help me buy the specific one we want online <laughs> today. Because otherwise I'd have to do that before. Yeah. And it might arrive early. Mm. So yeah, she got a, a, a Jigglypuff figurine from EB Games. <laughs> that was her big surprise. That's, that's the level of surprise that she can tolerate. Anything, if I, like if I got a, a wiggly tough, that's too much. Was Diablo the evolution Four of Jigglypuff? Oh, right. Was Diablo Four a surprise? Uh, Diablo you... Four was like uh, no, that even that wasn't a surprise. Right. She was because it came out a few days before her birthday, and we played three together. Like uh, when it came out, when we were really young, eighteen, and so we were like, oh, we were excited for Diablo Four, and uh, it came out. And I was like, oh, let's get Diablo Four, and she goes, no, get it for me on my birthday. Oh, that's very sweet. And I said, yeah, okay, well, it can be like an early birthday gift because it's out now because I really wanted to fucking play it. And she goes, no, it has to be on my birthday like a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that's like, uh, you know what you know what it is? That's the, um, you know, how, how, how some girls are into um, uh, consensual non-consent. Yeah, my girlfriend's into um, consensual non-surprises, where she's like, "I like the idea of being surprised, but I would like to consent to everything that happens in the process and know exactly how it's going to go down, <laughs> so that we can pretend and yeah. role play a surprise." Um, right. So, uh, did you know that 
the did you know there was a public holiday recently? Yeah, on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I got I got to the I, I went to a cafe this, in the morning and I paid for my coffee and it was like way more expensive than it normally was. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Have they changed their prices? Yeah. And then and then I was like, oh, maybe it's a public holiday surcharge. And uh, I was like, it's a public holiday. And then it said it was the king's birthday. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? It's the king's birthday. Is it? Was it the same day as the queen's birthday? Yes. But in Australia, we celebrate the queen's birthday, and it's it's not when her birthday is. Yeah. So a different day. I don't. It's not even his birthday. Well, it's even less relevant now because not not only was it the wrong day for the queen, now they've just changed it to the king's birthday because he's the king now and she's fucking dead. I'll, so I'll look it up. So that I guess that means that. Because, yeah, I, I always thought that growing up, the Queen's birthday meant that it was the fucking Queen's birthday. But then I found out that in Perth, they have a different Queen's birthday. And I was like, well, who's wrong here? And it's both of us. When's her actual birthday? We should celebrate her death day. That's what I reckon. Sorry. I don't understand. They've, they've changed it to King's birthday. Does he even know that we're celebrating that? Does that mean that he gets like fucking six birthdays? Are other are other countries in the Commonwealth celebrating the king's birthday on the former queen's birthday that is also not her actual birthday? Her actual birthday is the 21st of April 1926. Right. Damn. And I look up Charles. He's actual birthday. So that means like fucking... Hitler was like in right in her heyday, like her like best years of her life was like when Hitler's was started rising to power. And that's not just because she's 21, by the way. November 14. Oh, that's yeah, that's confusing. I don't understand. I guess that's just like Australia's just uh, like undying commitment to a public holiday for any reason. You know, our country has the most public holidays out of like any country in the world. Yeah, I used to hate public holidays mm. when when it really impacted my workflow because yeah. we'd have to record several episodes in advance. It was always such a bitch. Yeah, because we were there was absolutely no way in hell that we would ever pay you uh, penalty rates. Yeah, or come in on a different day. Yeah, to record. Yeah, yeah, or 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 do uh, we would we would never ever pay you more money to work on a public holiday or do extra work. Yeah. To avoid that. So instead we go, well, let's just cram. So it was always like, there's a public holiday next Monday. Yeah. The Monday before we go, okay, we're recording eight episodes today. <laughs> <laughs> really good stuff. Um, so uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I've done nothing this week. <laughs> I've done nothing. And uh, and and I'll, and also week two of Armadaphanil, it's starting to work a little bit less. I think I'm going to have to up my dose. Yeah. I think maybe, I don't know my, now that I've been on it like every day and I've been doing things, I, my, it has made me more awake. It has not made my brain more powerful. I'm still have a, uh, a sleep deprived brain so I can stay awake all day mostly. Uh, but if I have to do anything like plan a surprise, I'm falling asleep at 9 PM and I won't be roused. <laughs> Um, all right. So, okay. We're fitness influencers now. Yes. That's what we are. Every we've, uh, Keel and I, we've started renovating. Uh, we started a new renovation project. The renovation project is our bodies. And we had our first gym session together mm -hmm. last week. We did legs. It was awesome. And, uh, we both, uh, left the gym as paraplegics. <laughs> we did say that last episode there was going to be a meetup at a gym. What what where, where was the meetup? Jets Carom Downs. Jets Carom Downs. Uh, neither of us have a membership to Jets Carom Downs. No, I Downs. do. I do. I just need to cancel. I'm going to cancel it after this episode. Right. I've never been to Jets Carom Downs. I really hope that no one showed up because we, <laughs> upon reflection, when we said there was going to be a, a meetup and a workout day with all the listeners of the show at Jets Carom Downs, and we gave a specific date. And and time we didn't sound like we were joking and it sounded very serious <laughs> and we never confirmed that 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 was not true and i'm here to say now after the fact that that was not true and if you showed up to jets carom downs on the day that we told you to come sorry but uh that's your fault mm. for, for ever thinking that we would do that 
big Lewis Spears fan works at Jets Cam Downs. Oh, right. He is the reason I stopped going to that gym. <laughs> I was going like every day at the start of this year, but yeah. every single fucking time I went, yeah. he was there and yeah. he'd have a chat. Right. And that yeah. made me stop going. And I can only assume that that he's such a big fan that he will be listening to this <laughs> right now. Hope not. Especially after finding it. Like he probably fucking did his hair for the meetup, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like he was like, oh my God, there's going to be a Lewis Spears meetup at Chet's Karam Downs. Oh. This is the best day of my life. I'm going to get to meet Lewis, have a chat, meet Keelan, have a chat, oh. bond with all the fans. He, he would always be there from like 7 a.m. to yep. midnight. So I started trying to go after midnight and he was always <laughs> there. What do you mean he would have a chat? Like at the front desk? or No, you know, I'd be doing whatever I'm doing. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. He'd walk over and say, hey, man, what have you been up to? Nothing. And I, yeah, nothing. And then he'd tell me about his work and I go, uh, you work at a gym. Yeah. That uh, sucks. Yeah, man. <laughs> Has it been a hard day today? Oh, yeah, I've just been making sure that everyone scans their code and, <laughs> and pretending to wipe down the equipment. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want – I can barely handle talking to you when we work out. I don't want <laughs> – I don't want to – I'm my gym, right, no one was a fan, which is really good because mm. I love – I love that I'm known, but when I start becoming a regular at a place like at, at a cafe or a comic shop or like a gym or places of the pool, places that I regularly go, I don't want to, I don't want to be recognized ever. Like, especially if the staff know me, I like, I remember I was going to this one cafe, the old place that I lived and it took them 18 months to go, oh, fuck, you never told us that. Like what you do for work, or oh, you ha you ha you're like uh, you're famous. That was great. Those eighteen months where they had no fucking idea who I was was awesome because I didn't have to have any chats and they they didn't treat me special. Love that. My gym was that, and it was really really good, and I loved it because they were friendly and it was a, it's a local gym and they're great uh, and they just treated me like a normal person. I didn't have to talk to anyone, uh, and and then I posted the video. Uh, uh, of my dick uh, doing deadlifts that went abysmally viral in the gym. And now I have a much, much worse version of what I don't like because instead of me getting to the gym and them going, loved your video or, or hey man, good luck at the comedy festival or, oh man, how do you do comedy? I no idea how I could do that. I, I, I walk in like the next day and the woman goes, Oh, just checking what shorts you're wearing. You're not wearing those grey shorts, are you? Oh, 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 great. I get to go to the gym and talk about my dick. <laughs> and now I'm the guy that had a viral video of his dick at the gym. And all the staff ever since then have like started treating me weird. And it's strange. And it's really weird. And amongst the staff, I'm Lewis Spears, mate. Yeah. Because I, I went in one day and I was like, yeah, I want to sign up my... My friend told me to join. Yeah. Who's your friend? Lewis Spears. Oh, Lewis Spears. Where is he? Every time <laughs> I walk in. <laughs> I, Where's Lewis? Every, Where's his dick? <laughs> every time, is he wearing those shorts? Every time I go in, the same lady goes, where's Lewis? Oh, Not here. Yeah. I, I work out with my girlfriend. So yeah. it's her. And then we, we signed up together with, with another woman who mm. was like taking us through. And I was like, if I tell you who referred me, does he get time like free yeah free month or something and she goes yeah he, free two weeks or something yeah i go lewis spears oh lewis spears <laughs> very funny awesome it's fitness first in frankston by the way we're, we're talking about there's actually going to be a meetup next friday 2 p.m keel and i are going to be there at fitness first in frankston uh they're having free trials uh no scan in required uh <laughs> see you there say lewis's name at the door yep say my name at the door it'll be great um yeah, so there's that, right? Which which I can deal with because they don't they don't interrupt my workout, right? I can handle saying hello when I come in. That's fine. But because I've been going there so often recently and at regular times, which I've never done before, it's always been erratic times for like two weeks and then I stop. I've now been going like pretty much every day for a while now. And I have I think I've just been involved in my worst nightmare. I think I'm becoming a regular. And it's one of those gyms that have like a regular community. 
Yeah. And they're all mates. Yes. Which I love seeing. I love to see that. I don't want to be involved at all. And I made a huge fucking error many weeks ago. There was this guy that was my height and he looked awesome. And I was like, I would like to look like a slightly less jacked version of that guy because I've never seen a six foot eight dude that looks good. They're either like fucking half Thor, like that giant power lifter guy, like 300 kilos or they're roided out or they're just like really skinny or they're like super fat. Yes. There's, there's never any like uh, respectably built six foot eight dudes because it's like so hard to do that. So I see this guy and he looked good and I'm like, man, how much do you weigh? So I looked at him. I was like 71 kilos at the time, just after my surgery. And I was like, man, he maybe he's like fucking 85 kilos or something. He looks good. And I go, how much do you weigh? And he goes, 100. And I went, fuck. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, but he's one of the regulars. And I go there a couple of days ago and uh, he was in a giant group of like seven people chatting, bantering, and they're the type of regulars where they're like, we go to the gym at this time and I love the other regulars so much and I love working out with people so much that I'm not even going to pack my headphones, Ugh. right? The worst. So I see a group of seven people, no headphones around the neck. So I'm like, they do, this, they do this on purpose. And then he says hello to me and ropes me into a conversation. Now I know all their names. Now I'm a regular. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> So that means that at any moment when I go to the gym, there's going to be one of those seven people there and I'm going to have to have a friendly cordial chat <laughs> with them. And then eventually they're going to find out I'm a comedian and they're going to go, oh, I should check out your podcast. And it's like 20 minutes of me going, I don't want to talk to these people. <laughs> Fuck. I don't want to be a regular. I, I want to be a silent regular. That's what I want to be. <laughs> like when I get in an Uber and I tell them I'm an accountant. <laughs> Every time. You know what was really good, actually? I got my... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you have this very often. It's always awesome when you get it. I got uh, uh, I got an Uber and it was his first ever trip. Oh, yeah. First or first day. I think it was maybe his second trip and he was super nervous. And uh, and and he was just telling me that he got... I'm like, oh, man, why are you dri driving Uber, right? The One of the rare times that I ever wanted to talk to a guy uh, driving an Uber because I was interested in... Because it was his first day. And he goes, oh man, I got, I got hurt at work and I just, I just realized that working too much took me away from my children. So I'm doing this because I'll get to spend more time with my kids and like a lovely, lovely guy, but he was super nervous and he had no idea how to work the app or anything. Like he was, he, he was a horrible trip, right? But he was lovely and he was learning. I talked to him and, uh, and then, and then he drops me off and, uh, and he goes, oh yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, and he had no idea what to say. And I just said, don't worry about it, man. You're doing great. You're doing a great job. Well done. You're going to nail it. And he goes, buddy, brother, thank you so much. You have given me so much confidence. Thank you, brother. Oh, I'm so nuts. I know. And I was and I just like, you're doing a great job. Because he was, he was like, oh, I'm doing a bad job. And I was like, you're doing great, man. Keep it up. You're going to do fine. And uh, and then I and then I did something I've never done in my fucking life before. I gave him a ten dollar tip. <laughs> what? A ten dollar tip? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, and I can't afford that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a short trip, but uh, but I just I just thought I thought after I did that, it felt really good, and I thought it was a really nice thing to do. And then I thought, man, that was his first day driving Uber. It is so downhill from here <laughs> for him that like he'll never ever have a trip that good a day that good he'll never finish a day of work that satisfied ever <laughs> <laughs> than his first day or from from because he was in frankston from here on out it's it's fights and racism and vomiting in the car oh and but maybe that one ten dollar tip and positive encouragement from me will keep him going for the next six months Ten dollars is nuts. I might do five dollars if the guy's really. I've, nice. I I will never ever tip anyone ever in this country. I'll never do it. Yeah, I think that I think that doing it is like the start of the end of fucking workers' rights. You know, it's funny actually. When I made that package last week, going through all your episodes, I actually listened to the first like five just to get a feel for what it used yeah. to be like. Yeah, and. 
in like the third episode, you go on a big rant about tipping. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, it's really detailed and really in depth. And this is before you'd gone to America. So you, you why just, was I even upset about that? You were just talking about it from yeah, like a herd experience. You never actually had to do it yourself. Yes. It was, a lot of it was like wrong, but it was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and isn't that the show? <laughs> Man, I listened to Spear and Sundays. A lot of it was wrong, but it was really interesting. And it hasn't changed that much in 301 episodes. Man, I love Lewis Spears. This guy's a fucking moron, but he's, he's done with passion. <laughs> it was actually a really awesome take just it's like so much of a time capsule of when yeah. you first moved into the warehouse yeah you're talking about you're like man how good's uber eats you're like yeah. i don't have to talk to anyone and you're like it's such a great new innovation yeah <laughs> i was like oh brother doesn't know what's coming <laughs> yeah that's gonna be fucking the only way that i could get food for two years <laughs> yeah, is exactly. uber eats. oh this is amazing um yeah, I got this comment on episode 301 uh, that really, uh, that's uh, 300. Episode from, on episode 300 that really sums up, uh, this guy is definitely a long-term listener just by what he's really, he's really sums up the show in like a, in a sentence. Congratulations on 300 episodes, Lewis. Illness, COVID, and just being a retarded cunt gets you down. But despite everything, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, that's the show. He's sick and he's retarded and he's a cunt. Great <laughs> podcast. Um, I uh, I think a, a good uh, a good area to kind of end this episode is uh, is just letting you guys know that I'm about to ascend to the next level in my, in terms of my career. Um, really cool. Uh, I've actually uh, just been reached out to by a casting director for a feature film. Uh, let me just pull it up here. I got it was literally this morning. Um, I had a guy reach out, and he goes, uh, "Hey man, uh, we have a role in a feature film that I think you would do great in." And he sent me uh, a little bit of info. Let me just pull it up here. Um, I'm just finding the director's page. Uh, okay. Excellent. All right. I've got it up here. Okay, so this is the casting call that uh, they thought I'd be a good fit for. Um, so this is for a feature film. <clears throat> and normally, I don't know if you guys know this, you probably wouldn't know this because you're not like a big shot actor like I am. Most times with casting calls, they'll do a casting call and, and if you're an aspiring actor, you have to submit a tape to them. Mm -hmm. They'll never come to you. Like they only come to like really, really famous big shot people like me, Brad Pitt, Chris Hemsworth, People like that, uh, that are so in demand that we don't have time to go to auditions. And also we don't need to because we're so in demand and talented and really drive so many people to buy tickets and spend money that we're a, just an economical force in our own right. That's why we get paid the big bucks. So this one was uh, a role that's custom made for me. They reached out to me specifically. Casting call. Needing an actor, male, in their 30s and 40s. Correct. I'm 29. Start. Uh, playing a conservative YouTube commentator in a feature film. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they're looking for an old racist on YouTube and they've gone, Lewis Spears is perfect for this. <laughs> this guy looks 35 years old and he looks racist as fuck. I knew the red LED tube lights behind me were a problem. <laughs> uh, and then right next to it, I go, oh, I, there's another casting call for my cast mate. Uh, Female, 13 to 18, playing a young YouTube fan. Oh, so uh, so I'm, they want me to play an old racist pedophile. <laughs> uh, for free. I think it's a student film. <laughs> <laughs> so I've hit, the, I've hit the big leagues now. Mm. You know, sh should I do it? It's, no. a, it's, a, it's a day of filming. It's a two-page roll. They said they'll buy me a case of beer. <laughs> Oh my God. It yeah. does, to be fair to, to the director, it looks like he really knows what he's doing. Like it, the other stuff that he's done looks really, really good. Um, but it's just Australia. So there's no money, there's no budget, no nothing. I do um, always, always love in those kind of casting calls. It's like no payment, but we'll buy lunch. We'll yeah. buy beer. Yeah. It's so it always makes me laugh. It is that that's what the, the fucking Australian film industry is really just 
kept afloat by free lunch and cases of beer mm. uh, and and uh, and rejected submissions to international <laughs> film festivals. <laughs> yeah. That's what's keeping this industry afloat. Um, nah, good on him. He's having a crack. He'll probably be shooting fucking insurance ads anytime soon. Um, yeah, look, I'll think about it. Maybe we'll see. I'll review the script and and uh, and see if it's any good. <laughs> Might be a fun thing to do. Come back with a story about it. Um, all right, I think we're going to end the episode there. I don't have uh, any uh, emails to answer. If you want to send an email to the show, send it through to podcast at loosepears dot com. Uh, and you'll you'll make episode 302 guaranteed. If you need some life advice, you've got a story to tell me, podcast at lewspears.com, lewspears.com. We're going to continue on and do the Patreon episode of the podcast. That's going to be out right now if you're listening to this uh, because it comes out early uh, uh, every single week uh, because pa- uh, Keelan runs Patreon now, so it actually happens. Um, all right. Yes? Uh, no, nothing. Great. Cool. <laughs> Have a shit one. <laughs>